The state is appealing a court's fine of about $1.4 million. A federal judge says the Arizona Department of Corrections is in contempt for its poor prison health care. News 4 Tucson Sam Salzweil will talk to one of the families that joined the lawsuit after an inmate in the Tucson prison died. According to court records, the state admitted some inmate deaths could have been delayed or entirely prevented. Some of the video in this report may be disturbing. Be advised, the inmate is still breathing. This is video of Tony Lester dying in the state prison in Tucson. It was obtained by investigative reporter Wendy Halloran. The walls and bed were already covered in blood when corrections officers started recording. The video plays more than seven minutes without anybody touching the inmate. I tried my hardest to prevent this from happening, but nobody, nobody understood. Nobody cared. Patty Jones is Tony's aunt. She was more like a second mother. The family was close with the kids all growing up together. As Tony got older, the family started to see signs. He suffered from paranoid schizophrenia, having multiple personalities. Siler, that was the personality that we, that, that commanded him to kill himself or hurt others. Tony went to prison for assault with a knife. He was trying to kill himself. He cut his neck and two of the very close friends um, try to take the knife and he starts swinging the knife around. While in the county jail, so he could go to trial, he was medicated. He told his aunt. I don't want to ever hurt anybody and I don't want to hurt myself. So you have to make sure I stay on my medication. After going to prison, Jones says he was not taking his prescriptions. He was communicating through letters. At the bottom of that letter, it said Siler. So I knew, I knew right at that point. I was helpless, I couldn't help him. I knew something bad was gonna happen. Where did he cut himself at? Tony was still clearly alive throughout the video. Jones says officers clearly showed a lack of urgency. No care, no care. He was treated less than how we treat our animals. Pathetic, disgusting, inhumane, unconstitutional. Tony's family joined a lawsuit known as Parsons v. Ryan. When the case settled almost four years ago, the state was required to meet 103 specific performance measures. A private health care company called Corizon was hired to help. According to the judge, the state turned to a private contractor which has been unable to meet the prisoner's health care needs. Rather than push its contractor to meet those needs, the state has instead paid them more. And defendant's good business decision was to provide incentive payments to a contractor who had already committed to the state to provide that very service and had repeatedly and consistently failed to meet that obligation. The wisdom of a business decision that so rewards a failing contractor escapes the courts. Arizona Department of Corrections spokesman Andrew Wilder wrote in an email, It's still disappointing that he chose to issue such a controversial ruling on the same day he leaves the federal bench. The Arizona Department of Corrections strongly disagrees with his ruling and is confident that the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals will reverse it because it's contrary to both the evidence and the law. Corizon is not a defendant, but the company was repeatedly mentioned in the ruling. Corizon wrote a response, we're proud of our team and the gains they've made to improve the quality of Arizona's prison health program. And hopefully the state, and more importantly the taxpayers, are spared the cost of the fines imposed and moving forward benefit from a fair and impartial judge. That judge says despite the Corizon arrangement, the responsibility belongs to the state. The judge wrote, if a private contractor is pushed to the door because it cannot meet the state's obligations, then so be it. Such a result would flow directly from the state's decision to privatize health care to save money. That goal of privatization cannot be achieved at the expense of the health and safety of the sick and acutely ill inmates. Indeed, Arizona, for most of its history, in many states, do not privatize their health care services. Jones realizes, compared to Corizon's contract and the costs of the prison system, the fine isn't much, but she's still celebrating the ruling. This has brought out and shined light on the inhumane treatment. She's committed to keep fighting for all inmates, no matter what crime they committed. They have constitutional mandated rights. In our United States Constitution, it declares we're in America. Those are laws that are to be upheld. 
Tony was scheduled for release in January. His daughter is now eight years old. A spokesman for Governor Doug Ducey wrote on his personal Twitter account, they stand by the corrections director and will keep challenging any judge that tries to set agency policy from the bench. If you have a story you'd like us to investigate, email investigators at kvoa.com or call 955-4444. Investigating for you, Sam Salzwedel, News 4 Tucson.